all I could think of from the moment I jumped in was I have to get out of the water. At the front, Barry Leonard faces a dilemma. The escape chute, which doubles as a life raft, fails to open. And all of a sudden she said, jump, jump, jump. I looked at the water and then I jumped out, just straight out. Unfortunately, I didn't have a life vest. I didn't have a seat cushion. I had nothing. I've never experienced anything as cold as that in my life. I knew from reading that I probably had five minutes before I started to lose my faculties. At the back of the plane, the situation is critical. Water is flooding the rear, causing it to sink. And both exit doors are submerged, so can't be opened. Vicky Barnhart is in the back row. As the water is coming in so quickly, I'm starting to think, this may be how I'm dying now. I'm going to drown. It just felt like it was getting deeper and deeper. Um, and I remember just thinking, I have to tell my family goodbye. I flipped open my phone. I knew it would just take two pushes of a button to call my husband. Um, and that's what I did. Um, of course, I got his voicemail. I got a phone call from her. I just assumed that they were on the ramp and that she was going to be delayed. I just basically said, I think this is it. My plane has crashed. I love you. I love the kids. And I love you, I love you, I love you. I think that's basically what I said. But about 15 minutes later, I uh, checked her voicemail, and that's when you know, she basically said, you know, we crashed. She was screaming into the phone. Everybody around her was screaming. I felt somewhat peaceful. But I was also sad, sad that I might be leaving a family so young. You know, your, your heart's ripped out of your chest. And I literally was shaking as I was looking at that phone. The flight attendant starts yelling to go to the wing, go to the wing. And so myself and a lot of other people turn around and start heading back up the aisle. The next thing I remember after that was stepping out onto the wing. Rob Cullajay, who had been going on a golfing holiday with his son, leaves his seat in row six to join the crowd at the wing exits. People were actually climbing over seats to get out. Once we stepped out of the plane, the water didn't, it wasn't the thing that shocked me the most. It was the, uh, the slipperiness of the wing because of the jet fuel that was in the water already. Once on the wing, Rob's relief is short-lived. His son, Jeff, had been seated separately, right at the back of the plane. And he can see that's now underwater. My son, I knew was in the back. That's all I knew. I didn't know if he had gotten out yet. Now, is he in the back of the plane, stuck or injured? 13 miles away in Brooklyn, the NYPD scuba team is scrambled. Patrol bell goes off. We know we got to start getting ready, making our way towards the helicopter and getting going to the job. At the plane, several people have fallen off the wing or jumped into the water. And you could see the, uh, the fear and terror in her face. And I said, Miss, don't give up. I actually slid down into the water off the wing and grabbed her and pulled her onto the wing, yelling all the time, <laughs> you know, you're going to make it, you're going to make it. Nick Gamache is one of the last to reach the plane's forward exits, where Captain Sullenberger is ushering people into the rafts. He was just kind of standing there, and he was, he was the picture of calm. I mean, we just crashed a plane, and here he is, and he's wearing his, he's wearing his captain's jacket. And he was, you know, just telling people, get, get into the rafts, get into the rafts. And he was yelling at people for the back to come up to the front. After jumping out of the plane without a life jacket, Barry Leonard tries to swim to the shore, but then has doubts. There's no way that I could make it to either shores. I will not survive. I honestly just turned around and started swimming back to the plane. 
the front life raft on Barry's side of the plane has finally deployed. Freezing and in a state of shock, Barry is pulled onto it. There was a pilot that was sitting on the side of the raft and he said, sir, you have to get out of your clothes, you're going to freeze to death. He actually took his shirt off of his back and gave it to me. Well, I thought it was just incredible that he had given me his shirt. Three minutes and 40 seconds after impact, the first ferry arrives at the scene. As I pulled up to the plane, guys were cheering, women were crying. My guys started handing out life jackets. We tried to get as much out there in the water as possible in case somebody slipped off a wing or, or uh, one of the rafts deflated. You know, people's lives were dependent on us. Deckhands help Vincent carefully maneuver his ferry as close as possible to one of the wings. They were giving me hand signals, you know, three feet, two feet, stop. But the plane is in the middle of the river, where the current is fastest, making it a constantly moving target. So it's an ebb tide, and we're just on the south side of the plane, and the plane keeps turning in to my starboard side. As a second ferry arrives, another problem emerges. The boats aren't designed as rescue vessels. Their decks are nearly seven foot above the water, too high for the passengers to reach. The boat crews throw down nets and rope ladders. As passengers begin to scramble up from the wings, a new danger looms at the front of the plane. The back of his boat was starting to swing towards the people in the lifeboat. And we all start yelling at him to stop, 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 because he literally squished into the lifeboat and was making it kind of push up a little bit. And I thought, oh my gosh, you cannot injure those people. The ferry makes a lunge at us, not, not on purpose, obviously. So we were yelling at him saying, you know, stop, stop. The emergency slides, which double up as life rafts, are still tied to the plane. We wanted to cut the raft loose from the plane, so if the plane went down, it wouldn't pull the raft under, too. We immediately said, throw us a knife. Mark Hood is in the same life raft. The ferry came back, tossed the captain a knife. The captain cut us loose, and we began to float free. 60-year-old Rob Cullerjay has been on the wing for over four minutes. His only hope is to climb up onto the ferry. I scooted up this makeshift ladder. At that moment, I was petrified because of the fact that I didn't see my son. I saw everyone else but except my son. Uh, one of the officers said to me, there may still be bodies in there. We don't know. Hundreds of New Yorkers are witnessing firsthand another major catastrophe in their city, and some of them are filming it. Definitely a plan. There's a life raft with people in it. In this previously unseen footage, workers in a Manhattan office block capture the dramatic scenes. But it didn't go under. It's, it's still above yeah. the water. It's still, I see. I see the cockpit. It did stop recording. Then you can sell that to the newspaper. 